Hi, this is Rashid, and you are watching Step by Step Robotics. And today I would like to show you one of the projects that we are working on, and it is the avatar robot. So we are not going to make an avatar like the one in the Hollywood, or the robot that carrying the machine gun and walking around. But the purpose of our avatar robot is to let the operator, which can be some people, which has some uh, physical disability, or some old people that has a difficulty to go outside and interact with the other people, or even just a regular people that want to go to some uh, harmful or dangerous environment. So you can use an avatar to go in that place instead of you. That is the avatar robot of what I mean. So I would like to show you one of the function that we think it will be useful and can be adapted to another project as well. So let's imagine that the avatar robot should have at least one camera to see the environment around. In some particular situation, the fixed side view of the camera is a little bit hard to see the object on the shelf or on the leg. So you can also try to move the robot a little bit backward to see the wider image and also the whole shelf, but we cannot get the detail of what is exactly of each of the stack. So we need somehow to lift the camera up higher or lower than an actual sight, and that makes me think about this robot. So this is the two degree of freedoms palletizer robot. So the terms palletizer comes from an industrial robot manipulator that used to lift the pallet in the factory. And also this kind of structure is very useful and popular for many robot makers company. So this two parallelogram linkage can make the end effector orientation not to change. And that makes these two plates keep horizontal and vertical to the ground all the times. So first, let's see how I assemble this guy. And here we are, I attached the robot onto the table, but technically the robot should be on the rover and driving around. And today we're gonna test only the camera lifting function. So this setup should be enough. And the reason that we are using only two servos for the robot arm, not for the base and not for the end effector, because if you think about the overall system, the rover itself can provide the yaw movement and the purpose is just to lift up the camera up and down so we can remove a redundant motion of the robot arm base and use the rover motion instead. So you might think that why don't we use the linear actuator for this kind of motion instead. I think that this kind of parts, the carbon parts like this, is really simple to design and really easy to make. And also it's quite lighter than the linear guide or linear ball screw. And the robot arm itself is pretty much faster than those actuator. So this robot arm is using two of Robotis Dynamics servos and I'm using the U2D2 converter so I can easily control the servos from my PC just plugging the USB port and here is the 16 volt for the power supply. And as you can see the overall design is pretty simple for a prototype and you may notice that there is a little bit wobbling on this direction because of the link 
of the carbon plate is quite long and also this kind of passive joint is just a simple bearing and M3 screw and nuts tightened together but it's good enough to check the functionality of lifting the camera and we can still upgrade the mechanical parts later and I already made a code to control the robot motion from the joystick and let's see how it's working So here is the neutral position of the robot arms and this joint is pretty much in the same line as this joint. So I can control the robot up and down from my joystick like this and also lift it up. And we can also go into this depth. So it can work up like down like this. So as you can see that the servos can operate quite faster than the linear actuator and I'm also using the velocity profile from Dynamics of SDK so you can see that the motion is pretty smooth. So from manual control from joystick, we can make sure that we are able to control the robot as we want. And if we're gonna attach this robot arm to the rover and driving around like an avatar robot, the operator might have some kind of motion sickness or the dizziness because the camera is gonna moving around. So I'm gonna use the GoPro Hero 9 for the target camera for this application because we can get the stabilized image out of this camera. And I just use an advantage of this hardware and save my time from developing the image stabilization from scratch. And let's see how it works with the robot arms. So right now the video from GoPro is streaming to my PC and I can see the camera views from here as an operator and if you're gonna use it as an avatar robot so we can use it like searching on the shelf like this and go to up here and looking for some object that we want or going down and more down here And this is how it looks like for the camera lifting device for an avatar robot. We can use these technologies for another application as well. So if you want to know how I can control this robot arm from the joystick, please go check the code on my GitHub repo. So if you want to know how to get a stream from the GoPro and control it in the other application, there is an official API Python module from the guys Conrad IT that I got the code from him. 
it's very good module that you can try playing around with your GoPro so you can try check it out and I will leave the link in the description below so next I'm thinking to do some object detection from this GoPro because we can get the OpenCV frame and use the robot arm to track the object that is detect so that would be another interesting application of this camera lifting device and that is for today's video. I hope you guys like it. There are many projects that my team and I are working on and I really want to show to you. But today it's just only one piece of technologies that we can apply to another project as well, not only the avatar robot. So if you like this kind of video, please press like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you soon.